Dear friends, in a few days, Seventh-day Adventist Christians from around the world will be gathering in San Antonio, Texas for our 60th General Conference session. During these historic meetings, delegates will be considering a number of key issues, and probably the most notable will be the subject of women's ordination. How we vote on this important doctrine will no doubt have a profound impact on the mission, theology, and unity of the Adventist Church for years to come. We certainly need to pray. But first let me say I believe we should be doing much more to empower women to use their unique gifts in a broad spectrum of ministry. The church also needs to offer an educational track with full-time employment opportunities for women that will commit their lives to sharing the gospel. But this, of course, must be done in a way that respects the clear Bible distinctions regarding the roles of men and women in ministry. We need to remain faithful to the scriptures, especially now, as we're meeting in the shadow of a culture that is clamoring for same-sex marriage. This is not the time for Seventh-day Adventists to get fuzzy regarding biblical differences between men and women. Ellen White said, there are lessons to be learned from the history of the past. There are periods which are turning points in the history of nations and the church. If these lessons are received, there's spiritual progress. If rejected, spiritual declension and shipwreck will follow. That's Bible Echoes, August 26, 1895. Most of us have heard the various biblical arguments for and against women's ordination. For a moment, I'd like to invite you to consider the history of what happened to five major American denominations that encountered this issue. Consider, for example, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, once a staunch Protestant church. The ELCA, the largest Lutheran body in the USA, began ordaining women in 1970. From their peak membership of 5,200,000, only 3.5 million remain in the Lutheran ECLA in 2015. In all, this is a staggering loss of over 1.7 million members or 30% of their membership. According to data from the Barnett Group, from 2004 to 2010, Sunday school attendance fell nearly 40% among Evangelical Lutheran churches in America. Today, the Evangelical Lutheran Church is run by a female bishop and they support same-sex marriage. Not to mention they've experienced serious internal division. One reason that was noted for the decline was that as women pastors took over the various churches, it seemed like the men became disengaged. Now consider for a moment the United Methodist Church. On May 4, 1956, in Minneapolis, Minnesota, the General Conference of the Methodist Church approved full clergy rights for women. Since then, They've also experienced a catastrophic deterioration in membership. At the 2012 General Conference meeting, Reverend Adam Hamilton told the full body, at the current rate of decline in the last five years, we have less than 50 years of the United Methodist Church in the United States. Methodism in the U.S. has lost over 4.5 million members, declining every year since 1964. Today, The United Methodist Church accepts same-sex marriage, and they have experienced major divisions and a virtual exodus of congregations from the denomination. What about the Presbyterian Church, USA? Well, they began ordaining women in 1959, urging that it would help them grow their church. In 60 years, the church has declined by over 55%. The PC, USA, now reports 1.8 million members, and that's less than half of its peak membership of 4.25 million and down 1.95 million from what they had in 2011. In the last 10 years, their membership has declined by 500,000. In 2010, the Presbyterian Church began ordaining homosexual clergy. Several groups have broken away and formed new Presbyterian denominations. What about the USA Episcopal or Anglican Church? Well, they began ordaining without regard to gender in 1976. Since then, they have experienced a precipitous decline in both baptized members and average weekly attendance. According to the Christian Post reporter, in 2010, the TEC membership in the United States dipped below the 2 million mark, which is far below its peak membership 
of approximately 3.6 million in 1966. The Episcopal Church began ordaining homosexual clergy in 2009. Thousands of members have now divided from the USA Anglican Church and formed a new denomination. During the same time that other denominations were ordaining women, the Southern Baptist churches, or some of them, began to lobby for women's ordination, and some began to independently allow the practice. But then Baptist leaders brought the matter to their 1984 convention in Kansas City. After much vigorous debate, the Southern Baptist Church voted to do more to empower women for ministry while maintaining the Bible mandate that only men should be ordained as pastors. Southern Baptists currently do not endorse same-sex marriage, or do they allow homosexual clergy to lead their congregations. In the 20 years following this decision, the Southern Baptist membership climbed to over 16 million members, and today they remain the largest Protestant church in North America. As you can see, if history is any guide, voting in favor of women's ordination shattered the mission, theology, and unity of these major denominations. Whereas the Southern Baptists, in rejecting women's ordination, they preserved their cohesive identity and they continued to grow. Now with that background, friends, consider the Seventh-day Adventists. In 1863, we were organized formally as a denomination. In the following years to the present, we have climbed to over 18 million members. And now we are at the same crossroads as these other major denominations. What will we do? What we decide regarding the ordination question is going to make a big difference in the future growth, mission, unity, and theology of the Seventh-day Adventist movement. Over 40 years ago, I was a very confused young man trying to figure out what the purpose of life was. And I was wandering around the country searching, studying. I ultimately ended up living in a cave way up in these remote desert mountains. But God and His providence arranged where somebody had left a Bible in the cave. And after reading the Bible, I accepted Jesus. But then I was faced with another problem. There's so many Christian churches. What's the truth? For the next two years, I began to study with all of my heart many different denominations. And I believe there are good Christians in many different churches. But after careful study, I became convinced that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is the remnant church of Bible prophecy. And I was so convinced that for the last 30 years, I've been involved full-time in doing public evangelism all over the world. And we have a beautiful movement where people believe the same thing all over the world. My heart is aching right now with the concept that we may vote to allow different divisions and different churches to practice different theology. This is going to be very confusing for evangelists that are inviting people to join the church, trying to explain why one church believes one thing and another church believes something entirely different. I think it's a time for us to stay together, that we must be united on truth. And so friends, please be praying. Pray that the Holy Spirit will come in a mighty way into the convention session and that he'll overrule plans the devil might have to cause division. And he'll give every delegate the clarity and the courage to vote to uphold the truth. Secondly, study the issues and share information with others. Pass on this appeal. And at the conclusion of this brief video will be a web address where you're going to find some of the best resources to understand these issues. Study for yourself. This is so important that all the information is now being provided absolutely free of charge. Please go to the website, take a look at the material, and share this video with others. And most of all, pray for a revival.